Hypotheses that claim a causal relationship are very interesting, but also very bold, and especially in the social sciences, very susceptible to alternative explanations, or threats to internal validity. Experimental research designs maximize internal validity. They're referred to as true experiments, also known as randomized control trials, or RCTs. They're science's best defense against alternative explanations for causal claims. The three essential ingredients of a true experiment are manipulation, comparison, and random assignment. Let's start with manipulation. If you want to show a causal relation, the strongest possible empirical demonstration is one where the cause is under your control. If you can create a situation where the cause is present, a causal relation is more plausible, because you can show that it precedes the effect, eliminating an ambiguous temporal precedence. What about comparison? Well, causality is even more plausible if you can compare to a situation where the cause is absent, showing that the effect does not occur when the cause is absent. This also eliminates the threat of maturation. Think of the relation between violent imagery and aggression. Let's say I measure how many hours a week a group of 10-year-olds plays violent video games, and how aggressive they are, according to their teacher. Suppose I find a positive relationship. Kids who play more violent video games tend to be more aggressive. I can argue that playing video games increases aggression. But of course, I can also argue that aggressive children seek out more violent stimuli. I could have approached this problem differently and encouraged a subgroup of children to play a violent video game, say GTA V, for a total of 10 hours in one week and deny the other group any access to violent imagery for the same period of time. Now, if I find that the children who've been denied access to violent imagery are less aggressive than the group who played the violent game regularly, then I have a stronger case for the causal claim that violent imagery causes aggression. Of course, it's not a very strong case, since there are still many alternative explanations for the difference in aggression between these two groups. What if the kids in the video game group were more aggressive to start out with? What if there were less girls in this group, or more older children? This is where randomization comes in. I can randomly assign children to the experimental condition, with heavy video play, or the control condition, with no access to violent imagery. And I can do this by flipping a coin. Heads for the experimental condition, tails for the control condition. On average, this process will ensure an equal distribution over the two groups in terms of gender, but also in terms of age, previous aggression, hair color, shoe size. I can go on. On average, randomization ensures that there is no systematic difference between the groups other than the difference in the independent variable, the cause variable. Of course, in any one particular study, it is possible, entirely due to chance, that randomization fails and we end up, for example, with more girls in the control group, possibly explaining why this group is less aggressive. The only way to be sure randomization worked is to replicate a study and show that the results are consistent each time. So to summarize, manipulation ensures the cause precedes the effect. Comparison to a control group ensures the effect did not occur naturally and random assignment ensures that there are no other systematic differences between the groups that could explain the effect. Replication is generally not considered a characteristic of a true experiment, but it is required to ensure randomization actually works.